Hello everybody, this is the next video in a series of videos on Python programming for engineers. My name is Mark Bucker and I work at the Delft University of Technology. Today's topic is object-oriented programming. Object-oriented programming is a different way of programming. What we've done so far is called functional programming. In functional programming we have data and we have functions and the functions work on the data. But they are all stored separately. In object-oriented programming, you store them all together in what's called a class. Object-oriented pro oriented programming is a different way of thinking, but we've already used it somewhat. Most features we've used in Python are actually objects, although we didn't know about that yet. What we'll do today is we'll just start building an object or a class using object-oriented programming. What we'll do is we'll build a class for a rectangle. So rather than building rectangles by specifying the corner points, storing them all in a big array of all the rectangles and trying to plot that, we create a class and we store every rectangle separately. And we'll do that by example. We'll create a class and the Python commands are called class and we have to give it a name. Let's call it rectangle. And it's common to have classes start with a capital, as I've done here, rectangle with a capital colon, enter, and then <clears throat> we define the first function of the class. Now this might se seem all a little cryptic, so I'm just going to do it. We're going to define a function that has this funny name. The first thing we pass to the function is called self, and then, and I'll explain all that later, and then we define the lower left-hand corner of the rectangle, x1, y1, and the upper right-hand corner, x2, y2. And inside that function, I'm going to store all that. Self.x1 is equal to x1. Self.y1 is equal to y1. Self.x2 is x2. It would be nice if I know how to type. Self.y2 is y2. And I think I've made an error here. There we go. And this is called, and this is a function, so it should be called def. And I'm going to save this, and I'm going to run this. Run, and the, the name of this thing is bauplatz q34. I have created now a class called rectangle, and let's first see what it does. I can create a rectangle. Uh, say I'm going to call it r1, and it's a rectangle. And when I open the parentheses, you see it knows what it is. It's a rectangle and it has exactly the arguments that I provided it, except for that self thing that I'll get back to. And it's x1, y1, x2, and y2. So let's just give them, say, the lower left hand corner is minus 1, minus 1, and the upper right hand corner is 2 and uh, 4 and 2. And if I type now r1, it tells me it's a rectangle instance, whatever that may mean, right? Uh, but the nice thing now is that this R1 has stored the corner points, and it has stored the cor corner points in the names I've given it here on the left-hand side, x1, y1, x2, and y2. That's the data of uh, the rectangle, and the rectangle is called an object. This is a class. When I call the class, it returns what's called an object. object. And that's also called the instance of the class rectangle. So R1 is a rectangle. And R1, if I type R1.x1, it returns the x of the lower left-hand corner. R1.x2 is the x value of the upper right-hand corner. Exactly the values I've entered when I called the rectangle here. Um, Again, these X1, the x1 and x2 are just data that are stored with the rectangle, and they are called attributes of an object. To find out all the attributes, we can type r1 dot, and then hit the tab key that I'm going to hit on the keyboard right now, and it tells us, oh, <clears throat> we have four attributes, x1, x2, y1, and y2. So for example, we have y1, which was minus 1. Now, what is this funny function called init? Well, you might have noticed we called a rectangle like we called a function, but we 
didn't call a function, we called a class called rectangle. And we had to give it these four arguments and it returns an object, a rectangle object. Or like I said, it's called the instance of the rectangle class. Once you call the rectangle class, Python will automatically call this function called init, which has underscore, underscore, init, underscore, underscore. So you have to have that function in there so it can construct a rectangle object. So this init function is also called the constructor. That's where you define what input arguments the class takes and it builds the object for you. We also have to pass it as its fir first argument self so that everything self dot is what is stored inside uh, for the object. Those are the attributes. We can also define additional functions. For example, we can say we have a function area, def area. It's a function, so it needs two parentheses, but the area does not depend on anything else. And we can calculate here now the area of the rectangle. So um, A is equal, or the area capital A is equal to what is x2 self dot x2 minus self dot x1. That's the length in x direction times self, self dot y2 minus self dot y1. And then the function returns a. So now this, the, the, the language here, it's self dot. So how does it know self? Because this area function gets past self. Right? So now it, when you call the area function of the rectangle, it will take the x1 and x2, the y1 and the y2 of itself that you have stored as attributes and calculates the area. Let's save this function. We run the function again here on the right hand side. So now we've run this new rectangle class. We can create a new rectangle that's now part of this rewritten rectangle class, which we call R1. And if you do now R1 dot and a tab, you see it has these four attributes and it has an area now. And we can call area. Notice it doesn't need any arguments. Why does it not need? Because uh, because it shouldn't it need self as we've defined here? No, it doesn't because what Python automatically does, it takes whatever is in front of the dot, it substitutes as self. So r area gives us the um, area of the rectangle, which is 50. We could have called it this differently if you like it better. I don't. Nobody really does. You could have done rectangle.area and then give it R1. That's a very long syntax. It's supposed to work with this dot syntax, R1 dot function, or R1 dot Y1, if you want to have the Y value of the lower left-hand corner. Let's add a second function. Let's add a function that plots the rectangle to a graph. And we're going to call it plot, def plot. Again, we give it self. Well, and we could give it a color, um, maybe, and make the color, um, by default, blue. So if we don't provide it, it's blue. If we do provide it, it's something else. Um, and we do it with the fill command. Fill, and of course, fill is part of the PyLab library, so we have to import PyLab from PyLab import star. Fill, let me first give it the x value, so that is self dot x1 then self dot x2 then we so we go from the left to the to, if you look at the cursor from lower left to lower right and then we go up and over so we can get self dot x2 again and then self dot x1 those are the x values i'll use the backslash operator so i can go to the next line self dot y1 self dot y1 self dot y2 self.y2 another backslash and I forgot a parenthesis or a, a square bracket right here and I'm gonna say the face color is whatever color is I'll save it I'll run it I create a new instance of this class, R1 is equal to that rectangle, 
and I say r1.plot and maybe I'll make the color red and there it is ah not very interesting huh so let's make a couple of them right well I can even type them in here we'll do it in here so we have uh, we have r1 is equal to a rectangle and um, x1 what did we say minus 1 Minus one, minus one is the lower right-hand corner. Four, two is the upper right-hand corner. And we take a, make a second rectangle that starts at zero, two, and it goes to three, five. And then we see um, r one dot plot red and r two dot plot green. And then of course we have to do a show because <clears throat> we are now running it from a file. I'll do a run and there we go. We have this rectangle and that rectangle, um, which the red one is R1 and the green one is R2. Let's add a third function that checks whether a given XY location is inside the rectangle. So we make a function we call def uh, is inside, inside, and we give it a self, of course, and an x and y. So we check whether that x, y point is inside the rectangle. Uh, by default, if nothing happens or if everything else doesn't work, it's false. That's what it returns. But if um, we have three arguments, x, should be larger than self.x1 and x should be smaller than self.x2 and y should uh, and maybe next line y should be larger than self.y1 and fourth condition y should be smaller than self dot y2 if that's the case then the return value I see where we are with my tabs the return value is set to true and we return RV we run this and we don't want to have to see the plot now so let's comment these out we'll do that later again we run. Now maybe we do want to see the plot. Sorry. We run it. Nope. Here's our figure. And I'll say now what we ask for the point x is one, y is zero. Is that inside? Is inside? Rectangle one, so we have to point with it. I say one zero, which is located right here. One comma zero. True, it's inside the right rectangle. That's correct. Well, then it better not be inside the second rectangle. The green one is inside one zero. It's false. So it seems to work pretty well. That's all I had to say about the rectangle class. I want to mention a few other things. Like I said. Most features in Python are already object oriented. When we create an array, x is a range 12, for example, so x is 0 through 11, then x is an array. Type x gives us it's a numpy array, uh, but that means it has a lot of attributes and a lot of functions. If I type x dot and I hit the tab key, you see not even all of them because there's too many these dot 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 means there's more we can find them all by typing dear of x that gives them all and you see there's a lot of them uh, one of them for example is x dot shape it gives us the shape it tells us it has 12 values on a row but we can change the shape you can just say x dot shape is equal to 3,4 of course we have to make sure there's still 12 items so now x dot shape is 3, 4, and if we do x, it suddenly has three rows and four columns. It also has a number of functions. We can do x dot 
max, for example, is a function that calculates the maximum value of x, and that's 11. Or, as you saw, x dot max has a argument axis. What if you wanted to have the values, the maximum values along the columns? So we do <coughs> axis is equal to 1, and you see it finds the maximum value for this row, which is 3, that row, which is 7, and that row, which is 11. Many, many features, even figures um, and functions themselves are all object-oriented. And we're going to make good use of, those, of that for the remainder of this quarter. That's all I have for you today. I hope to see you next time.